Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at changing what ZBrush looks like. Uh, this is its default um, viewport. This is the default colors. I tend to use just what, whatever's the default. It makes it easier for me. The only thing I tend to change is this viewport background. I don't particularly care for it. So I always take this range slider and move it down so I have a nice flat color. However, uh, many of my students like to change the colors around and change them to something that you know fits their personalities and things like that, and I'm fine with that. Uh, the easiest way to do that is go up to our uh, preferences. We're going to look at our uh, colors. Okay, these are these are all the different colors we have for our uh, buttons. This is this is the different. This is the pressed button color, like meaning if we click on that, you know how it changed really quickly, that sort of thing. So these are all are all our different selections. This is the different buttons like you know when we when we know that we've got something selected see this is alternate this is a Z add mrgb etc. So we can change any of these colors, we can change the opacity on these things. We can change our backgrounds, uh the icon buttons, we can change them to whatever we want to be able to do. We can change the numbers and the text on the buttons. It's just basically absolutely everything you want to be able to do. Everything you want to be able to change, you can easily do that through here. This is all the different all the different buttons, okay? In fact, you can find a lot of things in the preferences. Uh, you can find out how to restore custom use UIs, how to restore your standard UI. You can store a configuration, meaning you know what what your UI is going to be. You can load a UI, save a UI. You can do a UI snapshot if you want to see what your UI is going to look like. You can do an actual snapshot of it. The quick info uh, lets you know a bunch of different information on. Uh, you know, icon sizes, things like that. That's not a particularly useful one, but the hotkeys are really good. You can actually store uh, hotkeys for yourself. You can load up the the hotkeys files, or you can load up your own. You can save your own, etc. Uh, with the interface, the buttons. The buttons are a particular size. All the buttons are a particular size. So you can actually change the size of the buttons. And of course, it'll be adjusted the next time you start your your restart your ZBrush. And of course, I'm not going to restart ZBrush for just that. Uh, you can have wide buttons. You can auto hide 2D uh, 2D tools. You can do a lot of things. You can do the auto collapse. And auto collapse means when you're not using a particular palette. See down here to the left, it says palettes auto collapse. It means when you're not using it, it'll collapse on you, so it's not taking up space. I don't particularly use that one. I kind of like opening up my sub palette and having it stay open. Uh, you, can, you can do a lot of different things. There, there's so many different uh, modifiers under each one of these that you can do. You can adjust your memory. Uh, you can uh, adjust your, your light spot, restore the spotlight, things like that. But again, we're going to go ahead and just deal with the, the custom colors. All right. So if we go to, let's see. Oops. Sorry, I just clicked out of it. So let's see what we'll do. For our main background color, I'm just going to click it. So that's one variation. You see I got lighter at the top. Okay. And it is also, by the way, it's it's a gradient. If you notice, this is a gradient. It's based on the fact that this was selected as white. If I had this as a different color, let's go for like a blue-gray or something. Something more like that. Go to preferences, kind of makes it hard to see, obviously. There we go. Now it's a, a bit of a more of a, a blue gray. It still makes it some of the, the text kind of hard to read, but that's okay for now. We're going to go ahead and select the main uh, color two. Oops, we should have switched this. And let's go back to this and go main color two. There we go. 
So now we have a black kind of view with this light blue, but that's okay. That's fine. I don't I don't mind that at this point. Uh, we can look at the push button colors. I don't want to change those particularly. Um, well, I guess we could. Push button color could be black. Oh, but we don't really don't want the push button colors to be black. Let's just make it really gross so we can actually see it. There we go. There we go. Now see how it took on that really nice kind of green highlight on all here? There you go. See all that? I'm going to go ahead and now change this to something really blue. Go to this and let's go do that. So what this is, is basically it's my buttons are now blue, but they have a slight highlight up there of that green. That's really god awful. <laughs> but again, this is just to show you what you can do. Uh, we're fine with the push button, uh, with the push button text color. Actually, no, you know what? We'll actually change the push button text color. Let's go ahead and make that like white. Make sure it's white. There we go. Oh, nice. Rock on. Again, this is one of those things we're just going to have some fun with it. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the... This is when it ends up being pressed. So if I click on it, check it out. <laughs> you went to that yellow. Save as. See that? That's outstanding. Basically, again, this is as interactive as you want it to be. You can pretty well put whatever colors you want for this. Let's go ahead and, by the way, I'm going to change this. Let's go to a dark bluish gray, but not quite. I don't want it to be quite as black as it is right now, so I'm going to change this right here. Oh, God, that's even worse. Well, at least I can see things now. The black was just a little too black. A little too black there, but that's okay. Anyway, this is just this is how you can turn around and create your different colors in the sub palettes uh, for your entire interface in ZBrush. It's it's basically you know whatever you want to be able to do. Now I could have gone for uh, uh, creating a custom UV. I actually could have uh, imported a custom UV. There there are some people that actually will post up some custom U, uh, UIs, and you can actually download them, and they become your own custom UIs. I I like, kind of like the basic. UI, the actual layout of this, but you guys can switch it around as you need to. Uh, you know, some people like to. There's a whole different bunch of different ways you can stack the viewports. Again, I, I'm just doing a quick introduction because there's so much here that you can turn around and do. It's ridiculous. It's actually almost dizzying. Again, you can look at this. You can change the opacity. You can change the shadow colors on these things. There's so many different things you can do with this. It's just ridiculous. And then there's even more that you can do down here for for some different uh, um, sub palettes. You know, you can change uh, information down here. Same with the Go Z button. Uh, Go Z is a function that can swap between ZBrush and Max and Maya and that sort of thing. So it, it exports the. Well, as you can see, it it can export to Cinema 4D. Max, Maya, Moto, Photoshop, and Sculptress. So there you go. But again, with these colors, it's pretty well the sky is the limit. It's whatever you're going to want to do is what you can do with it. Now, if at some point you don't like any of this, you can just hit the restore the standard UI and you get your standard UI right back. You haven't lost anything. Uh, which is exactly what I did. I like working with the default. It's just, I kind of like the color scheme, the way they've set it up. I don't need any custom colors, but again, some of my students like setting up their custom colors so everything glows, and that's quite okay. That's how you do it. You go into preferences, the eye colors, or in this case, what it basically is, is the um, UI color is what it is. And it's everything you want to be able to do. It's everything you want to be able to do, and you can save everything out once you're done. You can load up uh, a number of different UI colors. You can have friends set up theirs, and you can load theirs, etc. 
All you have to do is save the UI colors and then load them later on. And again, like I said, if you don't like it at some point, you can easily just restore uh, all of the colors back to the original, which is what I did. Anyway, my name is Stephen G. Wells. This has been 3dmotive.com, and hope you had fun with that one.